Welcome everybody, in this episode we are going to introduce React Query. This is a library that makes fetching and managing data in our application a whole lot easier. This is going to be a basic introduction. We're going to start with a fresh application so you don't have to have any prerequisites. Later on, we're going to figure out how to pull this library into our next JS application because they work together very well. Now you'll likely also hear this as TanStack Query, which is their stack of different software tools. But inside of this, the main thing we are interested in is the query tool, which will help with fetching, caching, synchronizing, and updating server state in your React applications. And the reason for this is that React does not have a recommended way of fetching or updating data. So throughout this series, one of the more challenging things has been the fetching, how to connect React to the backend. For simple applications, it's really not too bad. But as we've added complexity, it gets more and more complicated to keep everything organized. So a very quick preview of how this works is you're going to have a use query and this will return some stuff such as is loading, error, and data, and a bunch of other options. And then you can just use that down in your code. There's also support for posting data and we're going to look into some of these things. Now, another popular library that I was thinking about doing a video on is SWR, which is actually what is often recommended if you're reading through the Next.js documentation. And this library is created by the same people who created Next.js, which is this Versal company. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but obviously this is going to be a great library to integrate with Next.js. However, I think popular demand, most people want content for React Query. So we might look at SWR, but we're going to start with React Query, but fortunately this integrates with Next.js as well. So we have the ability to use initial data, which is the static data given to us from Next.js, and we can feed that into our query, so that way we can basically start with static data, but still have a dynamic page for fetching new data or adding data, whatever it may be. Up until now, inside of our Next.js application, we've really just used get static props and got that data on initial load, but we haven't really built an interactive web page yet. So both of these libraries are going to integrate well with Next.js. So which one you want to use is up to you. I'm going to start with the React query, and then maybe we will look at SWR here soon. So inside of the terminal, we are going to say npx create react app, and then just give this some name such as react query. Now I'm not using the TypeScript template. However, there is support for TypeScript inside of react query. We will worry about this later when we pull this into our existing application, which uses TypeScript. But for now, I just want to focus on the minimum to understand react query and how to use it inside of a react app. So let's go ahead and wait for this to finish installing everything, and then we'll clean up some of the defaults and get started. So let's go ahead and say code, react query, and open this in Visual Studio Code. Perfect. So now you can go through here and clean up stuff if you aren't planning on using it. So for example, the report web vitals, setup tests, the test.js and then we'll go into some of these files and clean up some of the imports so we're not going to need the report web vitals and we'll get rid of that reference there and then inside of app.js we will get rid of all this junk so this is what we will be left with now we're not using the logo so we can remove that so i think we could remove that as well so let's go ahead and delete that okay cool let's go ahead and now run the terminal inside of VS Code, and we'll say npm start. All right, so it started, and now our local host is going to look like this, just a blank page. Now we also have default styles, you can remove those if you want. I'm just gonna leave those in there, and we can put something in here such as hello, well that's not so close enough, helos, and there the value shows up. Now to install React Query, we are going to head over to the installation page and take this line here, npm i, which is short for install, and then the React query from TanStack. So over in a new terminal, we will paste that here. And what we'll do is over inside of index.js, we will basically surround all of our code. It will look something like this from the quick start, where we have a provider, and then we can put whatever code inside of that provider, and it will have access to the query client throughout it. So if this is like totally making no sense to you, 
check out my earlier videos in this series. Specifically, a good video to watch would be the one on use context. Now they're showing this being defined inside of app. You could of course do it that way as well. So they're just putting it inside of app and then surrounding a custom component. We're just going to back up a little bit and put it inside of index and surround app. But either way will be fine, but we are going to need these imports. So let's go ahead and copy those over. Or if you're just following along, feel free to type them out. So I will paste that here. Now we're not going to need this get to do's and post to do's as we will just code those in line where they're being used and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So now let's go ahead and create the query client provider. We will create a new query client and that's what's going to be passed in this provider here. So let's go ahead and we will define that down here. So we'll say const query client is a new query client in capital there. So query client, perfect. And then down in our render, inside of the strict mode, we will surround our app. So to do that, we will say query client provider, and we will provide it a value client, which is going to be our query client. And we'll close that. And then let's take the closing tag and move it down below app. All right, so that is our structure. So we've finished everything inside of index.js. Now let's head over to app.js. And what we will do in here is inside of our app, we will create the use query. So const, this is going to return some data. So we will put the values there in a moment, but let's go ahead and say use query. And that is a function call. And this is going to need imported. So import, and this will be use query from at tan stack slash react query. Now this is going to need two things. The first thing is it's going to be an array with some value and this is totally arbitrary. You can make something up. It's just how we refer to this query. So we're giving it a name essentially. The next thing is going to be a function which we can define in line as an arrow function here. And the goal of this function is to return the API call. You can see an example of that in their quick start guide. Actually, they have these variables, so they kind of hide that. But if you go in the overview, you can see an example where they're using fetch dot then and the response dot JSON is being returned. You can use fetch or Axios. This isn't a replacement for either of those. It will use existing fetching libraries. So I'm actually going to go with Axios as I think it's just a little bit simpler. So it's going to look like this, return Axios, and this is going to need installed, so npm install Axios. Once that's done, we can now pass in the URL here, and that's pretty much all we'll need to do. So let's figure out what data we want to grab. I'm going to again use CoinGecko as their API is very easy and nice to use. So this is coingecko.com API documentation. And under simple, we can pass in a cryptocurrency. It doesn't really matter what it is. So let's go with price, hit try it out. And then for the ID, we can say Bitcoin and compare this to USD. And let's execute this, make sure we get some value. And you can see the price there. So let's go ahead and copy this URL, bring it over into our code, paste it here, clean up that formatting a bit. And this is going to return some values. So we'll use destructuring and then we can type what we want. There's a lot of different options and you can get information on all these in the documentation. The one I am most concerned about in this episode is data, which is actually going to contain the data from the response. So we will take that and then down inside of our display, we can say data. And it's kind of a little bit weird on the nesting, but it's actually going to be data dot data. And then we will traverse into the structure, which I happen to know is like that. So if you look over here in the response, it's going to be Bitcoin and then USD. But the way Axios structures the data variable here, you will have a nested data property, which contains the API structure. So this isn't quite there because right now it's just going to error out. We will also need to import Axios, obviously. Gosh, import. Axios from Axios. Now we just have the white page because we're not conditionally displaying that. So it's just giving us a problem. So what we will do is we will say a ternary 
and it'll look like this data question mark dot so conditional chaining so that we don't throw any errors Bitcoin USD if that has a value then we will display this otherwise no and now we get the price of Bitcoin on our page some of the other interesting things that are returned at least the basics are error and is loading which will allow us to display different things depending on what happens so what we'll do is I'm going to put these all inside of the same return and say if there is an error we will return a paragraph saying uh oh error otherwise null and a very similar thing with the is loading but now we'll just change the variable here is loading and we'll change this to loading now we'll probably get a little flash on the page when we do a refresh you can see very quickly it says loading dot 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 now react query has some interesting functionality if you go to the network tab and click on and off of this page it regularly requests new data this is expected behavior and react query does a lot to ensure that the front end data stays in sync with the back end data and this is what we're going to look at in more detail in the next video. So if you want to learn more about React Query, please be sure to stay tuned for the next episode. I will see you then. Thank you and goodbye. And subscribe. Yes.